Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today I want to talk about release pipelines in Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps, like many products, has evolved over the years. Um, it wasn't always called Azure DevOps. Long, long ago it was called TFS, Team Foundation Server. Team Foundation Services. It eventually morphed into Visual Studio Team Foundation Services when it became converted into a SaaS offering that was a hosted service. This was around the BPOS D and BPOS S, BPOS and BPOS D era, if you remember that, way before even um, Office 365 entered the stage and Microsoft really went nuts with um, online services and creating SaaS versions of their commercial off the shelf software. Um, so Azure DevOps has you know, a very long history. Um, this, uh, this long history has led to features being turned on or, on or off, depending on you know, whether, whether the product team feels like they're, they're useful or um, they want to keep, they're, they're making money, basically. Like any, like any SaaS software, um, if there's features that aren't being used that cost money to develop and maintain um, and, and are not generating income, um, or there are better solutions on the market, most SaaS offerings and SaaS product managers will make that decision. Hey, we gotta we gotta cut this off. Um, although many features are left in there for backwards compatibility, historical purposes. The most notable uh, feature that I can recall that was turned off just completely um, in Azure DevOps was the test plans. I don't know if you guys remember that, um, but you used to be able to do automated testing, you know, with VSTS and Azure DevOps. Um, but uh, yeah, test plans was turned off uh, kind of unceremoniously. Uh, of course, you know, they gave the obligatory, you know, two year warning period. I don't know how long the warning period was, but it was a long time. Yeah, so test plans is a good example of when there was a, a pretty, pretty robust set of features. Maybe they weren't best in market. Maybe they were not being very, not being used very much. Uh, maybe they were, just weren't making money. And so those were eventually shut down. Um, Azure DevOps pipelines has um, evolved over the years. So Azure DevOps pipelines, originally there was a classic, it wasn't called classic at the time, but it was this brand new, beautiful GUI that allowed you to create pipelines by stitching tasks together and then piping things together in this graphical user interface. It was amazing. Um, however, it was amazing. I mean, compared to other tools that were like popular at the time, like Jenkins, this really made it accessible to somebody who wasn't a software developer or coder to stitch together pipelines and, and put together automation processes um, using the tool. So in that sense, Azure DevOps and VSTS at the time um, was really um, I think pushing the industry forward by giving people a way to create automation without having to learn like some cryptic language to get to get the job done. Um, now, I think fast forward, um, a lot of people upskilled, a lot of people cross trained. Um, and now we're in a world where I think most people are like, you know what, I'd rather not have the GUI do it for me. Um, I think I'm kind of comfortable with code now. Um, and even if like this kind of uh, low code kind of experience using a declarative language or schema like YAML um, or JSON, right? These like these these sorts of pseudo languages, right? They're not they're not exactly languages, but they have um, you know kind of a computer a computer like structure that's very uh, it's got a fixed schema, very flexible schema, but fixed. Um, in terms of its bounds and what you can do with it. And then there's basic uh, connectivity, you know, which you get in programming. So you can connect this to that, variables, pointers, references to objects, things like that, um, which is all part of the thing. And then you also have functions, right? Where like kind of like in Excel, you can call functions and pass in inputs and return outputs. So we're all used to these sort of functional languages um, these days, or, or we're getting there. And so it became less and less of a killer feature to have all these GUIs that drive, um, you know, your, 
automation process because the actual end user of the automation tools are not typically people that are unfamiliar with programming, scripting, and these kind of pseudo languages like YAML and JSON. And so in that sense, while Azure DevOps and its classic pipelines was pretty cool, um, it kind of missed the mark in terms of who its target audience was. And so with that target audience kind of like zooming by, pretty much Azure DevOps at the time with, with its classic pipelines targeted beginner users, but advanced and intermediate and advanced users, once you got to that point, you were like, all right, I got to take the training wheels off and we got to get out these classic pipelines. And so in that sense, the longevity of the classic pipelines wasn't great because it was so focused on the beginner user and software software products make this mistake all the time if you make it too simple um, you make it too constraining you know you might get early adoption with beginners but you're going to lose them as soon as they can put two and two together and they're like not now they feel like their their hands are tied by your overbearing nanny gooey right um, and I think that's what happened with Azure DevOps. And so Azure DevOps in its original pipeline world, we had build pipelines, which in a traditional developer sense, you compile code, you run unit tests, you know, you do static code analysis, that sort of thing. You produce packages or artifacts, and then those packages or artifacts are um, piped off to a release pipeline, which is gonna actually deploy your code, right? And deploy. Um, your your application and so that that kind of mindset was embedded within the product and so you had build pipelines and then you had release pipelines um, and so release pipelines had all these cool things where it's like okay now we have an environment right we're going to deploy to dev we're going to deploy to stage we're going to deploy to uat we're going to deploy to prod each of those environments have different owners and we may need to have pre-checks and post-checks and these sorts of things to really help an, an enterprise implement their release process within these release pipelines. And so makes sense, right? Um, however, um, just like, you know, the build pipelines and the classic pipelines kind of targeted the beginner user, I think release pipelines missed that mark as well because, you know, the, the folks that really like the, uh, these manual approval processes and things like that, the management layer of a release, a release, of a release process. Um, they love release pipelines because they can see it. And it's like, oh, I see how those things, how the environments flow and how it, it all connects together. But the practitioners that are actually building the release pipeline that actually have to maintain those things, once they, same problem, once they got past beginner, they were like, oh, you know, this, this, you know, I got to create a hundred of these things. And this, like, I'm just clicking around in this GUI all day. Um, and so there is an import export feature of release pipelines, but you know, it's, it's not great. I mean, the artifact that it produces is literally just a huge JSON extract of exactly what's in Azure DevOps uh, database probably. Um, and so it's not super maintainable for somebody. It's not even as maintainable as like an arm template person, like as an example. Um, so folks that are using things like Terraform and Ansible and stuff like that and Jenkins, you know, they look at this out output of the release pipeline. And they're like, okay, it's an artifact. It describes a release pipeline. I can go create more release pipelines from this, but do I really want to do that? Um, and that's when there, this uh, kind of cultural shift happened um, and Azure DevOps like kind of shed this like artificial boundary between build and release pipelines. And it just kind of was like, okay, we're just gonna have pipelines and we're gonna have YAML pipelines. Um, and so YAML started being introduced and maybe YAML was always there um, because you know you can, you can actually copy pasta YAML in and out of release pipelines and in and out of the classic pipeline. So I think maybe what happened was, um, you know, the, this, this capability of describing it was underneath, you know, the, the tool, which makes sense. Uh, but then it was then slowly surfaced to the user in the form of YAML. I don't know if it was originally YAML underneath or what, but um, they eventually surfaced it to us as YAML. And so classic pipelines and release pipelines do have 
YAML underneath and you can kind of reach in there and grab that YAML and pull it out and construct your own, you know, actual pipe Azure DevOps YAML pipelines from that. Um, it's not the most beautiful YAML code you'll ever see. Um, so just bear that warning, but it can help you out in a pinch if you're just trying to get, you know, th things up and running, convert it over to YAML pipelines. You don't want to have to rewrite, you know, the whole thing, flip the table. I get it. Um, so there is, there is a pathway for you. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, with the introduction of YAML pipelines in Azure DevOps, we get all of the things that we have in release pipelines. We get environment management. Like we can tie um, our pipelines. I'm dropping the build. I'm dropping the release. Our just We can get our pipelines to tie to an environment using this deployment YAML uh, syntax. And you've seen me do some videos about this. Um, we can um, implement approval workflows um, where we have certain steps in the process where we have certain uh, groups that need to approve um, and we can have logic about how many approvers, who needs to approve, who's a required approver. Um, so as, as we think about it, we're really chipping, chip, chip, chipping away all of those unique differentiators that made release pipelines release pipelines and like distinct from build pipelines, we have all those capabilities now in this common vernacular, which is pipelines, Azure DevOps pipelines. Um, and so that's why I say today, there's really no, like you would just like you would not create a classic editor uh, build pipeline in Azure DevOps, you're gonna use YAML. Uh, today, I would say you're not, you should not be using Azure DevOps release pipelines you should be building pipelines. You should be leveraging the Azure DevOps environments features um, and, do, and tying those to your pipelines using the deployments, the, the deployment job, right? And you should be working to implement um, all of those controls and process flow um, that, that you used to have, you know, using, um, using release pipelines, using multi-stage uh, pipeline syntax within your YAML code. So I hope this helps kind of break down a little bit of the history of why, why there was this thing called build pipelines and release pipelines and how it kind of transmogrified into just pipelines and YAML and how YAML got introduced and why today we still have the, the old world, which is, you know, that kind of bicameral pipelining mechanism build and release with this unified YAML based pipelining model. Um, which ha can do everything that the old mechanism could do, but in a much more cohesive, much more understandable, much more reusable way, all based on YAML. So I would highly encourage you, if you're using release pipelines, definitely if you're using classic build pipelines, um, you know, pick up a book on YAML. Um, go talk to your friendly neighborhood chat GPT and, you know, have it, have it sidle runs, uh, ride shotgun with you as you as you try and build YAML pipelines. As somebody who started off using classic pipelines, um, a traditional developer never never touched YAML in my life before. I can tell you there is a little bit of a learning curve, but it's good. It, it's gonna it's gonna get easier. It's gonna make sense, and it's by far completely worth it once you've made that switch over to YAML pipelines. So I hope I've convinced you. Um, if you are on the fence about whether to jump over and ditch your release pipelines, do it now, do it today, do it early, do it often. Um, we should all be using Azure DevOps YAML pipelines. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I hope this video helped you. If you dis disagree with me and you think I'm missing a critical feature um, a, that, uh, that makes release pipelines this killer application, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinion. I'd love to get that feedback. Anyways, that's it from me, Mark Tinderholt, the Azure Terraformer, signing off.